Michael Anyang. My name is Michael Anyang. I'm the Ayosh Kata branch CPD coordinator or professional development officer, as you can say. I'll be taking us through today's uh, presentation. First of all, I want to use this opportunity to welcome all of us to this edition of a CPD workshop. This is the first of its kind we are doing since in 2022. So I'll try as much as I can to bring up a whole lot of things which we know and those we don't know. Okay, that's what we'll be doing today. It's really been a challenging time for everyone with the pandemic and all the rest of them. But the good thing is there is a solution now at least to a great extent. I'm not a scientist, but you know, it's not been easy, but so far so good we are getting over it. And I also want to thank all of us for bringing our time to be part of this workshop. I assure you, it's going to be information packed, okay? Before the end of the workshop, at least you have one or two things you'll be going home with today. Okay, let me quickly run through the housekeeping slides before we move on to the next point on the agenda. If you notice, all your mics are on mute. Okay, this is to prevent the background noise from every other person so as to avoid distracting the speaker, okay? So this is being done by us hosting it. If there's any need for anyone to be omitted, we will take care of that. You can choose to keep your cameras on or off while the presentation is going on as long as it doesn't distract anyone. Turn your view to speaker view so you can get everything coming up being shared on the screen you may also type your questions and whatever you have in the chat box while the presentation is going on and again i'll say this get a pen and paper keep by your side while the presentation is going on you can jot one or two questions which you will type in the group but i'm very sure that by the if by the time we finish all we have in stock, your questions might have been answered. And to make sure that this is properly taken care of, I have one of our Ayosh Kata branch committee members who is also joining me to enable smooth running of the workshop. Odo Simon, he will be taking care of the questions that will be coming up. So, yeah. You may also, okay, hold on, sorry. And it's going to be one speaker at a time, which is myself or my colleague, Simon. And uh, the workshop will be locked so as we don't get people going in and out. But again, don't let that bother you. We know when to do that, okay? At the end of the workshop, you will receive an email survey upon completion when, when we finish the workshop you'll be receiving an email, like a survey of what you think, how the workshop went and all that. It's not going to take you anything more than one minute or so. As I said earlier, this workshop will be recorded. So even if we are not part of it or you didn't start when we begin the workshop, you will still be able to get a recorded video that covers all we've done. Okay. As I said earlier, I'll be, in order to make sure that the quality remains the same and consistency of information, we'll be playing a video, a recorded video presentation by uh, Emlyn, by Emlyn, who will be telling us a bit about the CPD presentation along with demonstration on how you carry out your CPD. But regardless, that information is more like generic, which you'll be getting. 
Okay, after that, I will go further to give a detailed explanation covering every single slide which Emily will be talking about, including the demonstration. Then I'll add up with most of the things. Like in previous times, people kept on asking, what activities can I use as my CP? What activities? There are a whole lot of questions. So what we'll keep doing it improving, okay? Whenever we get lots of questions about the same topic, we include that in our workshop. So what we've done in the recent times, it's uh, including activities. You'll be surprised when we'll get to that stage that most of the things you do on daily basis at work can actually be used as CPD as long as you structure it very well. So that's one of the most important things I want us to listen to. So I'll go over now to play this video. Please, I want you to concentrate. It's quite 40, 45 minutes video presentation by Emlyn, but please concentrate and you will get information from it as well. Yeah. So I helped to CPD, IPD, chartered membership and fellowship and everything that sort of entailed with that. So today we're going to talk about your CPD. So before we continue, I believe everyone can hear the sound of the video, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So why are you doing CPD? So we know for a fact there are many good reasons as to why we complete our CPD. It's all about reflecting on your learning and working, and it's a way of keeping an eye on your skills, your knowledge and expertise, and it's a brilliant way of showing and conveying to employers and prospective employers that you're serious about maintaining your core skills and learning new information. So within IOSH, we have students, affiliates, associates, technical, graduate, chartered and chartered fellows. For those of you who are students, affiliate and associate members, CPD, you don't actually have to complete it, but you do have the opportunity and you can access this. For those of you who are a technical graduate, chartered and chartered fellows, you are bound by the code of conduct to complete your CPD. So it is essential for you. So what is CPD? So continual professional development. So it's core principle of modern professional practice. It enables public confidence in OSH professionals and it is available to all members. So what will CPD do for you? So there are many things that CPD can do for you. So it's a brilliant way of reflecting, um, understanding your skills, where your expertise, what your strengths and weaknesses. And it's a brilliant way of utilizing the program so you can convey to your employers that you are keeping an eye on your core professional skills. What are you learning? What are you figuring out your strengths and weaknesses? How are you overcoming this? So there are four stages to a successful CPD record. So you've got plan, which is the development plan, doing, so do your activities that you've completed, reflect, so you're reflecting on your learning and reviewing, so you're evaluate, evaluating what you've actually been doing, how this can help you going forward within your career. So with your development plan, this is when you're looking and thinking about what your future goals and objectives, a bit of a summary about yourself, so your strengths and weaknesses, and any opportunities going forward. The activities, so that's what you actually you're physically have been doing, which you feel are relevant to your development plan. Reflecting, so you're considering what you actually learned from completing the activity, so what did you gain? Was there anything that you could utilise? Is there anything that you gained from completing that activity that can overcome a weakness that you've identified previously? And evaluating, so reviewing. So what is what have you actually done within your the activity that you can take forward within your professional 
career so any learning skills any new opportunities that you've learned any sort of new information how can you put that forward and utilize it within your career so there are two main sections to your CPD. So for those of you that have already started and been maintaining your CPD, we'll know you've got the development plan and then you've got your CPD activities. So for those of you that have never entered in or have lost touch with your CPD, the development plan is a summary about yourself. So it's, um, you're talking about your job title, your job role, your health and safety responsibilities, your strengths and weaknesses, and your goals and objectives. So your development plan is always gonna be a summary about yourself. So with the development plan, you want to update it every six to 12 months. And it's always going to be one activity rather than several. So your CPD activities. <clears throat> now your CPD activities will come from and be identified within your development plan because a lot of your activities will be the goals and objectives that you gave yourself previously. But your activities are when you've actually completed it and they go into a separate section and you're reflecting on it in a little bit more detail than what you did in your development plan. So in your CPD, you're going to want to do a reflective account. Now we're not looking for war and peace, but we are looking at more than one sentence. So there are four simple questions that you just need to answer when you're entering into your CPD. So what was the activity? So what did you actually physically do? Why did you carry this out? Now there can be many reasons as to why you did that. Um, what have you gained from complete so what was the understanding and knowledge that you gained from completing the activity and how can you take it forward within your professional career so what are you planning to do with that new knowledge is it maintaining your core skills are you going to utilize it because you've got new responsibilities like what, what are you doing with that information now if you're when you're entering into your cpd we are looking at you completing a minimum of six CPD activities within a 12 month time span and to update your development plan every six to 12 months. Now, you, if you wish to enter more than six CPD activities, you certainly can, but that is the minimum requirement. I do get a lot of questions um, regarding what can actually be an activity. Now there isn't really any right or wrong answer on how to enter into your CEPD, it's what you're gaining from it, but there are many different activities that you can do. So it could be work-based learning, so it could be something within your job role that you're physically doing. Um, it could be a professional activity, it could be a qualification, so like a, so like a degree or something like that. We've got, so formal learning qualification and then self-directed learning could be something that you're doing off your own back. Um, now the CPD activities actually don't have to physically be health and safety. So it could be that um, within your job role, you've been asked to go onto a computer course. So you need to learn a bit about Excel because it's going to be quite key within your job role. So it could be a computer course. Um, you could be mon managing people, mentoring people outside of your job role or within your job role, but it isn't your role, but that's a transferable skill because you might need to utilise it going forward. It could be a presentation course. So your new responsibility could be, say, for example, you have to talk and give um, presentations to key stakeholders within your job role. So it doesn't have to be within health and safety. However, the activity does help you towards your professional development. And it doesn't have to be a paid learning either. So you don't have to physically pay to actually put something into your CPD like a qualification. You could also go on to conferences. It could be a series of webinars. You could be reading something from the HSE website. It could be from the IOSH magazine. 
these sort of things. So there's many different things that you can do that can be classed as an activity. What we want to see is what you're gaining from it. How is this helping you? Why are you doing this activity? So there are many different support um, avenues that are offered to you when completing the CPD. So a main one would be going to your branches, to the workshops, you know, at, um, your mentors, asking questions, seeing if you can get help. You can also go, sorry, you can also call IOSH. So the customer service centre, the professional development team, they, they can answer any questions regarding your CPD. We also do have CPD guidance documents which you can ask for and we can send this out to you and this can support you on how to complete your development plan what should be in a cpd and it can advise you on any sort of what goes happens in a cpd audit okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go through a demonstration with you if you've got any questions please hold fire the reason why is because the demonstration might answer these questions for you Okay, so for those of you that have never entered into your CPD and you wish to start, the way to access it is you go onto the IOSH website, um, My IOSH, you scroll down to the bottom and you click Enter My IOSH, and then you just log in. And then you'll click on My CPD. And what will happen is this page will come up and you'll have a yellow flashing. For those of you that enter into your CPD already will not have this yellow flashing box. So what you need to do first is when you're entering into your CPD for the first time ever is to create a development plan. So what you need to do is click add new activity and you'll come to this activity page. Now the activity pages are always the same so whether you're if you're entering into your development plan or you're creating a new activity it will always look like this. So when you're into, into your development plan, all you need to do is class the title as development plan. And it'll always be this title. Now your development plan will have the status as started and it'll always be started. Now the reason why that is, is because it is a rolling document. It will never be finished. You'll always be updating it. The start date will need to be the date you've started entering in, so today. And as I said earlier, with the development plan, it's six to 12 months that you need to enter it in. So for those of you, you might want to put it in for a six month time frame. You certainly can. For others, they might just want to put it as a yearly time frame. So. And in the development plan notes, you're going to discuss about yourself. So as I said earlier, the development plan is a summary all about you. So you're going to talk about your job title, your health and safety responsibilities, your strengths and weaknesses, goals and objectives going on for the next six to 12 months. Now you're showing some weaknesses, you're going to want to be honest with yourself because this is where the CPD is quite key and it's helpful to you because it's a way of identifying what are your strengths and what your weaknesses. So do be honest with yourself because then you can sort of aim and think about how you want to overcome those weaknesses and also how to um, utilize your strengths. So with the goals and objectives, as I said, this is where you're going to identify your CPD activities. So your goals and objectives, they can be personal or they can be work related. They could be both. It, it could be a mixed bag. It's dependent on what you want to enter in. So some of the goals could be personal. So say, for example, if you're planning to do a qualification, that could be a goal. Um, it could be a project within work, you have an end date, you've got um, a plan, a project plan in place, it could be anything like that, it could be that you wish to aim for a promotion, as I said it could be work related, personal or both. 
Now, you can also upload files. So some of you might be sitting there thinking, well, I've already actually got a development plan and I actually did this with my manager. Now, if you do have that, you can certainly upload it and use it as part of the evidence. If you do decide to use it, just make sure that your organisation is happy for you to share and upload that, de that development plan that you have with your role onto an external site. And if you decide to use that, all you need to do is put in the notes field, just put a little bit, a few sentences about yourself, and then you can state that your goals and objectives are attached. What I would say is before you attach anything onto a CPD record, um, you make sure you've entered into your notes. Then you're going to want to assign it to an activity type, and then you're going to want to click save. The reason why is because the internet can be a funny thing. And if you're uploading a document, you know, the internet could kick you out, it could freeze, you just don't know. And what could happen is if that does happen, you could lose everything that you put into your CPD activity and you'd have to start again. So what I would say is click save. Go back to your development plan, click on the title development plan. And you just need to click upload files. Now I'm not entirely sure if this screen's being shared, it might be greyed out. But once you click upload files, it'll have it'll come up with another external web page and it will have submit files, browse. It also does state that each uploaded file cannot exceed five megabytes. So when you're planning to upload something to your development plan or your CPD activities, please ensure you do not exceed that file. The reason why is because first off, it won't attach to the um, website, to the activity, and it could potentially freeze your computer and then if you haven't saved your activity or your development plan, you'll lose it and you'll need to start again. So when you've completed and uploaded the file, you've chosen the files and make sure you click on the correct file when you're browsing. You just need to click upload file. And what will happen is where it says documentation in this box here, you'll have like a hyperlink appear and it'll be your file. Now when you sign activity type, the development plan and diary will always be section A. It won't be under anything else. And then you will see underneath here, you've got B, C and D. And those three sections are for your activities. And once you're happy with it, you just click save. And what you'll see is that it's slotted into your development plan and diary. You also notice that you have a start, end date, status and type activity. Now, as I said earlier with the development plan, it is an ongoing document. It's a live document. You're going to keep updating it. So when you want to come and update it, you just click on the title. You will change the start and end date because then it will convey to the people auditing your CPD when you re-entered it in. You are not going to delete anything that you originally put in the notes field. What you're going to do is I would suggest you put an enter in the date of when you've re-entered into it. So say for example, it was a year ahead. You put in that date and you can then and update it. Now when you're updating your development plan, you don't necessarily have to enter in your job title, your health and safety responsibilities, strengths and weaknesses again. The reason why is because it might not have changed, but for those of you who have got a new job, a new role or new responsibilities, that's when you're going to want to enter the information again. It's so we can keep track on what you're actually doing and what you, how you progressed. But for those of you who don't need to do that, all you need to do is talk about your goals and objectives again. So go back to your goals and objectives you originally set out for yourself. Did you accomplish them? If you did, you can say, I have completed this. Um, 
and then you'll have a CPD activity on the reflective part on what, of the goal and objective. And then you're going to enter into some new goals and objectives or any of them that have been extended and you'll keep updating it like this. And all you'll ever need to do is click save. Once you've done that. Now, when you want to enter into a CPD activity, what you'll do is where it says plan, my development plan and diary, on the right hand side, you'll see add new activity. Just need to click add new activity. As I said earlier, the activity pages are always the same regardless if you're doing a development plan or an activity page. So the title, you're going to want to actually put what you actually physically did. So what's the title of the activity? So what did you do? So it could be a um, webinar. The status is always going to be finished because you're reflecting on an activity that you've already done. The start and end date, you're always going to want to make sure this is accurate. So if it was a one day activity, you're going to put down in that date. If it took several days, a few weeks, you're just going to want to make sure that time frame is correct so we can see how long this activity has taken you. And in the notes field, this is where you're going to reflect on the activity. So you're going to talk about what did you do? Why did you do it? What did you gain from it? How can you take it forward within your professional career? The way you lay out your notes is entirely up to you. You could lay it out like those four questions and then do several a couple of sentences on each question underneath the question. So like that, and then just put some something about it. Or you could do it in a paragraph where you don't actually have physically have typed up the questions, but you're answering it and we can read that and see that. So it's entirely up to you how you wish to lay out your CPD reflective account, as, but we do want you to answer those four questions. Again, if you wish to upload any sort of evidence that you feel is relevant to your CPD activity, you certainly can. You just need to up, click on upload files. Again, remember, I would enter into the CPD activity first, assign it an activity type, save, and then upload afterwards. The, again, the reason why, because if the internet is being funny for any particular reason, it could kick you out. Or if you've uploaded a file that exceeds the file size, you might lose what you've entered in. And again, that is a very frustrating thing and we don't want that to happen. So once you've uploaded your files that you think is relevant, and then you'll save it. So when you assign it the activity type, how you assign it to an activity type is entirely up to you. So as you can see, we have three. We've got maintenance skills, new professional skills, transferable management skills. So maintenance of skills, so that's maintaining your core professional skills. So those are the skills that you started with in the workforce. Um, new professional skills is any sort of new information that you've gained. So it could be like a qualification, you're reading an article, you've gone to a conference, you set up a presentation, webinar, HSC website, things like that. Um, transferable management skill is again, it isn't health and safety related, but those key skills that you've learned from the activity is transferable and you can use it within your professional development so as i said earlier like mentoring managing computer skills things like that now when it comes to assigning an activity type you can do multiples rather than single so this it could be say for example a webinar it could be information that you already knew so it's a refresh on your key skills but you've learned something new as well. So it could be two. Or say, for example, if you were doing a computer course, it could be, you know, maintaining your skills that you did have regarding like your computer skills, 
but again it was learning new information but it was also a transferable skill so you could put all three down or if the activity was purely say for example like a risk assessment it could just be maintaining your core skills it could just be to one so it's entirely up to you how you assign it it's what you feel is relevant so all you need to do would be click save and then what you'll see is under b maintenance of skills and c new professional skills is here the activity has entered there now if you've completed the activity and then you just think actually i didn't i could have reflected a little bit more i wanted to put on this all you need to do is click on the title enter in update the notes field and then click save Now the layout of the actual web page, you can see at the top. So you have the option to expand all sections. So it will expand all sections for you. Ones that will collapse all sections. You have the print option, then you've got the download all. You will notice that on each activity, um, title next to it there is a button now this is a download function if you wish to download the CPD activity as in just a single one all you need to do is click on that button and it will download as a PDF file and it will come up in a, a separate page if you wish to download all and that means all of the activities that you've entered into your CPD record you'll click download all. What I would say though is if you've been entering your CPD for a very long time and you have a lot of activities you might not want to do that because it could take a while and potentially freeze your computer. But for single activities you just need to click on that. Now this can be utilised within your performance review so um, if you have a performance review or a yearly meeting where you talk about what you've done within the year with your manager and you need to provide proof and evidence and, what, and you're reflecting what you've completed, this CPD activity could be utilised in that way because you could just download the file on the activity that you did with the reflective account and you can use it as a option to show your manager how you reflected on that particular piece of work and what have you done to take it forward so you could use the cpd activity to help within your job role as well now if you look further down as you can see we have maintenance of skills new professional skills transferable skills and we also have completed with no assigned activity type that means that an activity you've created you've entered all the information in but you might have missed off assigning the activity type or there might have been a reason as to why, I don't know, regarding with the internet, it might not have saved your assigned new activity. So regarding that, that does happen. So you've saved it, you haven't assigned an activity type. All you need to do is if you can't find it in those three boxes, then it could predominantly be in the complete and no assigned activity type. So always check. So to assign an activity type, all you need to do is click on the title presentation or the title of what the activity is and then click on which one you want to assign it to click save and then you'll see that your activity has gone into the section that you wanted it to now sometimes i tried to do this the other day in a previous presentation but i couldn't duplicate it 
um, an activity could be duplicated. I'm not entirely sure why that happens. Um, I did try and replicate that, but it didn't work. So if your um, CPD activity does get duplicated by accident, we can't delete an activity. However, we can make it aware for anyone who's auditing your CPD record that it is, it's not a valid record, I mean, CPD activity. So all you need to do is if you wish to get rid of a duplication, you click on the duplication activity that you don't want, you click on the title and you click on the status cancelled. And you just need to click save. So what will happen is if you go right down to the bottom where it says cancelled activities, you can see they will slot there. And what that will say to the person who's auditing your CPD is that any activities, put in cancelled activities, it's not valid. You also notice on the status part that you do have planned and started activities. Now these are the activities that you haven't completed. So you have planned activities. These are the ones that you could you're potentially planning to do, but you actually haven't started it. So if you wish to enter into that your CPD record um, and put it in your planned, what you would need to do is you would just create the new activity put in the title of your planned activity, the status planned, the, the dates of when you think you're going to be doing it, I put a few notes, a few sentences on what you're planning to do, and then you click save. And what will happen is it will slot into this activity here. Now, once you've planned it or started it and completed it, if you wish to move that planned activity to one of the three sections or a combination of them you just need to click on the title change the status to finished enter into your reflective account then assign an activity type and then save it and then add any sort of upload documents that you want to to accompany with the activity and it will be the same for started activities. So started activities are the ones that you actually physically started to do. So once you've completed it, just click on the title, change it to finished, you assign an activity type, put some information in there, a reflective account so what did you do why did you do it what did you gain from it how can you take it forward within your career and then you click save and what will happen is that you can see it's gone on to your to that section that you've allocated it to if you feel that the activities in planned and started that you inputted in haven't gone to plan and you're actually not going to do it, it's the same principle. You just need to click on the title and then change the status to cancelled, click save, and it will just go onto the cancelled section. Now, not many people will be able to access your CPD, so it would be yourself, anyone you speak to within IOSH if you need help and those who actually audit it. So when you're entering into your CPD, be as honest as you can. Um, the reason why is because it's there to help you. If you wish for other people to have a look at it, that is entirely up to you. But the only people that would actually look at your CPD record are yourself, anyone you call within Irish, so for the customer service centre or the professional development team to have a look at it. Okay. So that is the demonstration and the presentation. Um, I'm just going to quick. Okay.
Okay, that's the <clears throat> end of the video. Okay, um, just a second, let me just go straight to this. So, Like I was saying, like I said earlier, okay, I will, based on questions people were asking during the previous CPD workshops, I was able to come up with some permanent, uh, let me share this speech then we'll, Yeah, I was able to come up with like permanent answer to those questions and incorporated it into the workshop. So we don't keep getting the same questions over and over again. Okay, what you are seeing on the screen, let me see if I can expand that a bit. I'm sorry. Now what you're seeing on the screen, it's uh, examples which I was able to provide regarding CPD activities because people kept on acting. What activities can we use as CPD activities? That's where people get stuck most of the time. They might know how to write it, how to present it, but they don't even know the activities to use. Now, I'll tell you this. As long as you are working in the site, you shouldn't have problems with that, especially when you are involved with the core activities. For example, like what I've written out here, preparation of cost assessments, that can be used as CPD, noise assessment, hand and vibration assessments, which you do on daily basis, depending on your activities. You can use that as your CPD activity. The fire risk assessment, risk assessment, these are the daily jobs, you know. You do review method statement depending on your level. Your daily observations, your internal safety walkthroughs, Meetings which we attend, you can actually use the minutes of meetings. And if you guys take pictures or attendance, you can use that. The, the thing is, regardless of whatever it is, how you present it matters most. Then your evidence will now make sense. Okay, safety award presentations, which are doing, like trying to motivate the workers. Emergency evacuation drills, your audits, which you do on site from time to time, the safety awareness campaign which you do on site, that can be used as a CPD activity. So again, you go to accident investigation, there are reports which you prepare, you can use that, you know? If you move further to incident review panel, depending on what the investigation is, that can as well come in as an activity, you know, how the whole thing happened. Your training, the trainings you are doing, either you are the one delivering the training or you are the one receiving the training. That can as well be used as a CPD activity. The certifications which you obtain from those trainings. So depending on how you structure your reflective account, that you can also use as well. Coaching, coaching, mentoring. I know the mentorship program which uh, Ayosh is doing, that as well you can use. if you are involved in that, you know. For us, we are doing this student internship program. That, if I want, I can as well use that. Showing how I've been going through with the student, uh, the students in my site who are being introduced into the world of health and safety. So depending on how that is structured as well in the reflective account, that can also be used. If you're furthering your education, trying to get a master's degree or a, a doctorate degree, that can as well go in, okay? Then, uh, yeah, the plans, the health and safety plans, which you prepare on site, you can as well use that because it's a live document, you know, which you keep doing, demonstrating your, uh, okay. The two bus talks, which, Maybe you are the one delivering the two bus stops or you are the one preparing the topics being delivered. That as well, you can use. Your training, training needs analysis and metrics which you prepare for your project. You can use that, okay? The HSE e-bulletins, 
information from the HSC websites, IOSH websites, and any other safety magazines, you know. Like me, I received this, uh, there's one health and safety magazine which I received, health and safety middle list. Depending on information I get from there, that can still be used. So if you're receiving such, you can as well use that. Then site inspection, survey, medical surveillance, a whole lot, email communications of any of these items above, okay? Then move a bit away from the job. Okay, any other thing like uh, Emily rightly said, it mustn't really be health and safety, but if it's something which you've done, then you want to apply this to your profession. For example, because most of us in the health and safety world, we do reports, right? So if you feel you are not doing a proper report, you're not, your English is not very okay to do what is involved. You can decide to take up an English class, you know, and maybe you feel that you're not really that good in computer as well, because most of the things, whether your presentations, your reports and all that, you do that on a system. You can take up a computer program or you are into management and you feel that you are lacking the management skills. You go into that, when you get it done, that can go in as your CPD workshop. This CPD workshop we are doing currently, you can still use it, okay? Because you're getting knowledge on how to write your CPD, on how to develop your CPD up to higher standard. The workshop webinars, conferences, you know, there's a whole lot of conferences that have been going on for some time now. That as well, you can still use, okay? So with this, items I've mentioned above, I don't think anyone should have any issue regarding activities they can use as CPD. And uh, some of the materials I'm bringing up here are already in our IOSH Qatar branch microsite. So don't worry about it. When you go there, you can get it from there, okay? Now, one more thing which I think everyone should know, yeah. There is this stuff I went for that to prepare as well, because the first one was to get the activities. Another one was to, hold on, let's see. This is a, I hope I'll be able to see this. Yeah. If I expand it, I might not see the other side. Okay. Uh, I came up with this because there were still questions coming up, you know, when people have, the, the first one is people knowing what to write, but they don't know what to use in terms of Topic. So that, were, that was what led to the first uh, document I showed you guys, the topics. Then another question, uh, questions started coming up on, we have the topics, we have what to write, but we are struggling trying to put it where it's supposed to be. Okay, so now I decided to come up with these slides to make it a bit easy for everyone. Okay, so what you'll be seeing here, it's, uh, Maintenance of skills. I picked up one activity to write a little bit about maintenance of skills. I picked up another activity to write about new professional skills. Okay, then I picked up another one to write about transferable management skills. I'll try to go through this if time will permit us. Now, for example, preparing risk assessment. So this might be a new activity for you on maintenance of skill based on what you are writing, okay? If that's the first time you are learning how to do a risk assessment, you went on a risk assessment course, then that becomes new, new professional skills for you. But if it's what you're doing already in your side, maybe you prepare the risk assessment, then there is a change in the process, change in things happening on site, they decide to update the risk assessment. Then it goes back to maintenance. So actually you can use one activity and uh, save it under 
three categories. It can go into maintenance, it can go into new professional skills and new transferable skills. So again, depending on how you've written that. So what I've done here, it's trying to show you what it looks like when you're trying to answer the four questions. As mentioned in that video, said what the activity was. You see, what was activity? Risk assessment, a continuous uh, review and update from the time I started until the time I ended it. Okay, then why you carry that activity? You see how I've written that I carried out this activity, it's continuous review and update as a result of so and so things happening. You know, again, why are you preparing the risk assessment? Why are you doing that particular activity? All of them comes in here. Now see, via email from time to time. Now I've tried to highlight some of the things you can use as evidence. You can use email, which you use to communicate this risk assessment as an evidence, okay? Now I went forward. What you learned or gained from the activity? You see, I realized that the more I carry out this, this is what I've gained. That's this line I've been able to put up here. Now, another evidence, site-specific risk assessment record. So that document alone, you just have to be careful. If you don't have any issues with your company and confidentiality, then you might know how to put up the company documents. Either you remove the cover page or something like that. But if you don't have any issues with that, then you can upload that along with the signed off page. Now, we go into the, the fourth, uh, sorry. Um, how the fourth question again, how will you use the knowledge or skills you have gained in the future? Trying to answer the first question. See how I've answered that question again. With the knowledge and skills I have gained in the risk assessment I prepared, this has given me more confidence in preparing this. So each of those questions you are answering, try to make sure that you are actually answering the question. That's the little secret about it. See, this has given me more confidence in preparing risk assessment review and update. I will also ensure that that I risk assess all activities. Now I'm talking of the future, which will be under my control in the near future and continue to update our records. You know, again, you keep going forward and forward and keep making sure that you are referring back to those topic sentence or let's say questions being asked. The essence of these four questions is to make, make it a bit easy for you not to go off the track. You know, because it's just like you keep on writing and writing, there is no guide. You might deviate a bit from what you answer, but with these questions now, why, as, as you try to answer each of the questions, you just realize that by the time you get to the end, you've already have your CPD reflective account in, in, in place, okay? That's the other one again. I try to come up with size safety inspection. This is something we always do. So I use the most familiar one, see? Weekly internal safety work and time I started, time I finished the date, okay? Why I carried out the activity again, the same thing. See my evidence on, on that observation report, close out report, email. Then what's the land or gain from the activity? Again, you see how I've written that. So this is the way the process continues. If we go to the new, new professional skills, I used one of the meetings, as I explained earlier, uh, Kata Ayosh Brand CPD, oh, uh, sorry, the workshops, CPD workshop. Now, venue and all that, all the information involved. Why you carried out the activity? This might be interesting for most of us because I mentioned that we can actually use this. So see what I said, I attended, I attended the CPD IPDPR. This is when we were still doing all together workshop as it served as an avenue for me to get information assistance on completing my CPD, IPD and PRR because then I was preparing for my CM, category transfer. So that's the reason why I did that. And also see, this was very useful to me, especially now that I'm preparing to register for my IPD to ensure I'm on the right track and fully aware of the step-by-step -step method. So that's the that one. Then see what you learned again. By the, by the end of the workshop, I was able to gain good knowledge on how to efficiently prepare and update my CPD 
for it to pass the CPD audit. In addition, I gained an in-depth knowledge about the IPD and period. So that is what I expect us to get by the end of this workshop. By the end of this workshop, you should be able to write a proper CPD. We should pass the audit and then you take it from there because that's the minimum, okay? Then see the evidence. Excuse me. Workshop MOM, workshop photos, screenshots, workshop attendance record. That's when we were doing in person. So that's some of the things I used. Now, let me go further to, yeah, transferable management skills here. Now, this is a training, in, in like a, an in house. Uh, what the activity was, work at height, on site demonstration, demonstration which I did on site side demonstration on full body harness. See, I carried out the full body harness demonstration due to this mm -hmm, safety observation, which was in, again, this is what you do on site because most of us, we do in-house trainings. We do our demonstration. Whatever that is going up from you to another person, it's, you are transferring it. You get my point? So that's the little unofficial explanation of that. Whatever you can move from yourself, to another person that you can use as your transferable management skills. It's what you learned again. Again, same thing, how you will use that. So it's a continuous process. See the evidence, practical demonstration photos, workers attendance record. Yeah. So like I said, this is also on the IOSH micro site. One more thing. Before we go to question and answer. There is a, uh, hold on, let me show this one. I always advise people to have this. Your CPD always have a note. Have a, have, have a note outside the CPD micro site. Write your CPD, make all your corrections, you know, on a Word pad, on a Word pad or Microsoft Word page. Have it prepared like this. After that, you then transfer to the IOS CPD site. Because the reason is this, when you are, if you are typing directly on the website, maybe you have issues with the internet. So all you've typed, might just wipe out. Then you lose the information. Then you start writing again. So it's better you do that outside using something like this. After that, you now come back and uh, transfer it. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is not really that. Okay. Uh, I think we'll just move straight into question and answer section. So we have like 30 minutes. We'll move straight into question and answer section. Then based on the questions we receive, we might be going into some other materials if it's required. And uh, whatever anyone don't understand, I think now is the time. Simon. Simon, are you there? Yeah, Michael, I'm here. Yeah. Please, can you pick up the questions and let's do justice to it. Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. The first concern that someone raised here, which I'll bring to your attention because it falls under the professional development department is about IPD. I know it's come uh, up often yeah. and on, but I was... you can't stop uh, talking about it. It might just be the reason why this person came here. I was can about you mentioning... help me, how Hold can on. I start my IPD? Okay. Uh, I was about mentioning that, but I think it skipped my memory at the beginning. Actually, this is a CPD workshop we're doing. For IPD, it's a bit of on hold, it's on hold. 
okay? Because the IOSH is making new changes to the way IPD is being done and the information we receive and all that. So that's why we kind of stopped doing the IPD workshop until we get the green light from IOSH and along with the materials or whatever new development that has now been in place, then we'll start giving that. But I think IOSH is also doing some uh, separate workshops, which they are, what, what happens is they, they send emails or they're about, uh, Katrin, Katrin, are you there? Sorry, yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just to, just to clarify, the workshops mm. that you're talking about are if mm. people have already start have already registered for their IPD but haven't actually started, okay. then they will get an email directly from IOSH saying, "Please come along and we'll help you to start it." And just one other point of clarification: Yeah, yeah, the IPD workshops are not being done by the branches, but you can still. Um, start your application to do it and what I will do is I'll put the link into the chat so that people can see how to do it but um, as you say you're not running workshops at the moment yes yes and uh, Ayosh Kata branch executives are happy to help as well on a private note you know if you are if you started it and you're having issues you can either come to myself or any of the executive uh, branch executive members you are close to we are more than happy to assist to make sure it's done. I've been helping a couple of guys who have been sending me messages on LinkedIn. So trying to put them through. You know that IPD, it's of two sides. So mine is the EOA section. So, you know, so we can put things right. But anyway, regardless, uh, you can always contact me. Then we can put you through. Okay, but officially we're not doing the IPD workshops. Yeah. Okay, so Mike says anyone who is interested in IPD should contact him directly for assistance. Once you've registered, yeah, once, yeah, you've, once registered you've registered and you don't know how to go about it, yeah. Okay, let me bring this question to your attention even though I think I've answered it. Can I include webinars from World Health Organization, International Labor Organization, as part of my CPD? And I said yes. Yes, yes, you can. Yeah. I, I mentioned it. The thing is, uh, it's part of the items I mentioned in the activities which could be used as CPD. The thing is this, it all depends on your ability to answer the four questions, what the activity is why you did the activity, what you gain from the activity, and how you tend to use this going forward. As long as you're able to provide answer to those four questions, and maybe one or two evidence, if you have, then you should be good to go. Yes, you can. Okay, um, so the next question is, um, yes, I think I also try to answer this to the general group. If I view the recording of a past webinar, like the one we are doing, can that be used as a CPD? What I say is this, if the person did not attend this workshop, someone who did not attend this workshop, um, and then you chose to download it from our branch website and view it from beginning to the end, you can list it as um, a CPD activity. And again, I say it depends on how you use it to answer those four questions. Reflective you account, to how you reflect that, on right, it. It is justifiable as a CPD activity. Mike, am I right? Yes, how you reflect on it, that's the most important yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. Another person was asking if he can use the CPD micro site if he's not an IOSH member and is automatic. No. no, no, no. Okay. You won't get access to it. Yeah, this person is requesting you to, show, to share those IOSH activity examples uh, in, the, in the brancher. 
uh, file. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's on the micro side. Uh, okay, it's already in the micro side. Yes, yes. Okay, so at, at least for now, these are the questions that people have asked, but I have a personal concern, which I want you or uh, Catherine to um, highlight on. Um, the record, we had the record number of registration for this um, CPD workshop, but the attendance is far below the registrant. So uh, can we think of why this happens? The number of people who, are, who turn up for the uh, workshop uh, is not uh, anywhere close to those who registered. This is, uh, this is an individual thing due to one or two reasons on, on the individual involved. This is beyond our control. Whoever registers has the obligation on himself to attend the workshop. So there's no restriction. Please, if there's any other thing you don't understand, ask the questions now is the time. Because I want to believe that after this workshop, you should be able to write your CPD activity without having an issue. And I want to lay emphasis on this. If you are going to start your IPD or you have a plan of doing this, please try and make sure that your CPD is up to date before you register for your IPD. It's a rule of the thumb anyway. The reason is this, when you start your IPD, you, all your concentration, all your focus will be on the IPD, okay? And now once you finish it, you receive an email, congratulations, you've passed your IPD, blah, blah, blah. And now your CPD will be audited. The moment you receive that email, that your CPD will be audited, you don't know when it will happen. It can actually happen the same day, the next hour, the next minute, the next day, the next two days like that. So you don't want to be in a situation whereby you pass your IPD and then you fail your CPD. You don't want that because you don't know the next time you have the opportunity to get it done. And you don't want to keep going and all of a sudden you get stopped halfway just because your CPD is not updated. You can't get your CMI off. Okay, so please, this is my advice, my recommendation. Make sure your CPD is up to date and then you proceed with your IPD. Okay. Simon, any other? I'm seeing, I'm seeing like 20, 28 messages. Have you answered mm -hmm. all of this or this is just the. Uh... Yeah. Um, I caught, in fact, a few questions came in this today. Okay. And then you have uh, addressed all of them. Uh, We still have uh, some minutes. I was even thinking we'll have more questions since this is the beginning of the year. So I was rushing into getting that done. Let me see if there's any other thing which have not shown us. And uh, one more thing for those of us, okay, this is already covered in the presentation. So I don't think it's an issue. I don't think it's an issue. I'm see, okay. Oh, there is a direct question to me. I just saw it's good I opened it. So the, I, I want to transfer from grad to CMIO. Okay. Yeah, it's through the IPD process. That's what you need to do to transfer. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You can always contact me. And if there's anything I can help you with information, then I will be more than happy to do that.
no other question is coming in, which means we are going to close earlier than expected. Eh? Um, this person wants to ask one question uh, related to today's discussion. Um, Abid Fayaz. Okay. Please type your question. Abid Fayaz, please type your question. Let's see. Okay, go ahead and ask question Abid. Or does he want to use the microphone? I was going to type it, but can I ask it please directly? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, this is Abit and uh, Abit Fayas and uh, and CMIOs. Okay. Uh, basically, basically uh, uh, I saw uh, there is one thing that the Australian Engineers uh, Association, uh, once they are uh, becoming a chartered member, they discuss here, I saw, and lots of people are discussing on this with me on the subject. When they uh, discuss this uh, with, the, uh, with regards to the uh, MMUP, Okay. Uh, when they show up their chartered membership, they are uh, giving uh, directly the, the MMUP okay, certification. Why not health and safety professionals, uh, once they become a chartered member, they, uh, they can be given this uh, certification? Uh, Abid, I would transfer, I wouldn't want to give you an incomplete answer. So this is because this is a bit of high, high level. I will transfer your question to Ayash president. But I, again, in Qatar, we already know what the system looks like. You are talking of this engineering uh, certification, right? In Qatar. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know what the system is like here. They already have their streamlined uh, process with the follow for engineers. So, and at the moment, they've not linked that up to, to health and safety kind of, but still some health safety professionals who have engineering background, as long as you have the right qualifications, whatever they've required and you submit it, you should be able to follow the process and write the exams. But reason why people from Australia are getting reason why people from Australia are getting direct MMUP and we are not getting that, it's, uh, I'm not sure why. Like I said, maybe there's kind of a memorandum of understanding between the body organizing this MMUP with that Australian body. So that I'm not aware of. And I don't think there's any M MOU between us here and uh, MM. MMUPD. So, but this I will still transfer to our president to see if he has any insight on this. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank Maybe you. I'll get much. back to you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, this question would have been better addressed in an IPD, but take a look at it. And um, since you have, if you have time, you can try to explain to this person. Mm, we we'll have to have minutes. Can you please minutes. explain to us the process of getting CMIO through NVQ? The if you have NVQ, you go to the UK. NVQ. If you have NVQ, you go through the EOA route, writing a, writing a 40. I think 43, that 43 questions, right? For three hours. Then you will do the part, part B. You, when you pass part A, you move on to part B. When you pass uh, part B, that, that's it for your IPD. Again, I won't want to say much, but this is what it looks like. Register for your IPD, submit your documents, and then, but the route you will get is this EOA. 
Okay, the open book uh, exam. exam part. Yes, once you pass it, which is the part A. Once you pass it, you go to part B. But if you fail it, you don't go over to part B. Part B is two theoretical questions that have like A, B, C, or A, B, like that. So when you pass these two, you are done with your IPD. Then you go for your CPD audit. Once you pass your CPD audit, you register for a PRI. Once you pass your C, uh, PRI, that's peer review interview, you get your CM. This is a summary of what it looks like on that route. There are no further questions as of now. Uh, okay, even though That's someone okay. has thrown in right. this. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, this is uh, Salam Kudumail. Okay. Okay, this I have completed a BSc diploma. Then I have registered for uh, this uh, IPD, but still I cannot access this one. Can you uh, advise me in this regard? You send, you yeah, send yeah, yeah. email. Yeah, you've already sent email to Ayosh, right? I'm for yes, sir, I have already sent uh, email to Ayosh, and I have registered and uh, completed everything. But I am not uh, uh, getting the correct link how to proceed with the IPD. There has to be a, a, resp a reply yeah. from Ayosh telling you how to go about it. Have you received that email? No, no, I am waiting for that one. OK, OK. There's a, there's a message in the chat box. Yeah. Have you seen that message? Yeah, this, uh, uh, there is a link. I received a link here. I'm seeing a link. No, the latest message hmm. from there's a latest Catherine. message from Catherine. So you can either call them up or send an email saying what the complaint is. Okay, this ios.com membership slash membership. This is what you're talking. No, PDS at ios.com. PDS at ios.com. PDS at ios.com. Or you can call them, yes. Yeah, that, that stands for professional development yeah. team. So it gets directly to them. The, mm. If you're sending something to membership, okay. it, it will get to them. That's just a more direct route. Yes. Um, if, if you're, if yeah, you're, I'll, you I'll, will get, there is, there is quite, um, there could be a delay. The, the reply time is within five working days. Mm. Mm. Hello? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I'm looking please, for I that. Want to, can I ask a question, please? Hello? Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon very much, everybody. The, oh, the host and the coast. Please, concerning the IPD, sometimes I try to get uh, mentors, and I, in the bus, I've sent the message to you so that I can have a mentorship. Because in the website, sometimes they'll be booking the time. But I cannot, these times, once they, I try to meet up, they will not be, the mentor will not be able to respond. And you say, if I can contact you, so I need this one as an assistant. Thank you very much. I send the message to you privately, please. Private message. Because before we finish this, so that I can have your kind assistance. Thank you very much. Okay. Are you in the, are you in the WhatsApp group for Qatar branch? No, I'm not in the Qatar WhatsApp group. I don't have the WhatsApp group, Qatar branch. I only have this one on email. Which one, you have the Qatar branch email? No, I mean, I have the website, the microchip or website for Qatar branch. I only received this mail on my true IOSH. So I'm not in the WhatsApp group. Let me reply your direct message. Okay. I need the WhatsApp group. I'm sorry, I can't be in the group. Thank you very much. Any other? Uh, this person sent me a direct message for a question. 
but I want to answer it so everyone can hear it. And then you will also share your perspective on it. Okay, Mike? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, um, he said, can I use any appreciation certificate from my organization for IOSH CPD? And yes. I think, yes. Most yes. importantly, if you can connect that appreciation what certificate it to your work activities, showcasing Very your active, excellence. Reflective, so reflective account. Yes. The, reflective that reflective account, note, which you're writing. Yeah. That reflective note, which you're writing. This or Larry me is just talking about M M M M U P. But yeah, Mike, permit me to share my perspective there. You know, M M U P. The way, the only way I think you can connect to IOSH is if you are doing M M U P. You can use it as your C P D activity. But for now, there is uh, it, this. MMUP is not under IOSH control. So it is not uh, logical to me to argue that once you have it, I mean, once you have a chartered membership, they can automatically upgrade, upgrade you to that. If you have MMUP, it's your personal achievement for having an engineering background. Uh, sorry, guys. Check under the name Richard A.K. He has just shared the WhatsApp group for Qatar branch. Please use that link to join. Use that link to join. Then we can take up the communication from there. There's a link under the name Richard A.K. Please click on that link to join. If you are not already a member of the WhatsApp, it makes it easier for communication. Yeah, he has just shared it again. This it will make it easier for us to communicate. Uh, if you have any issues, you can have a chat us from there. Okay. Well, uh, I think we've done justice to, I just want to believe that everyone understood what we've been doing today. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of us for bringing our time. It shows that we are being dedicated to our career and what we plan to achieve by attending this. So I think at this, since we don't have further questions coming up, uh, Catherine, maybe you might, we might have to end, end it here, right? Yep, I'll do that. Yeah. Thanks, yes. Michael. So thank you, everyone, thank and uh, have a lovely weekend. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.